Good morning. Uh, it's uh, Monday morning, and we are in uh, April 19th. Our month is flying by. There's some nice snowflakes falling outside. Uh, reminder that we're still not completely in uh, spring and summer yet. The uh, hands of winter are not wanting to let loose, but it looks beautiful, and it was a nice, crisp, cool walk this morning. We are going to look at uh, Acts 8, and we want to focus in this morning on the uh, outpouring of the Holy Spirit that happens in Samaria. So we, we covered a little bit of already about Philip uh, going to Samaria and proclaiming the gospel. And then we have these verses beginning in Acts 8, verse 14. Now, when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent to them Peter and John, who came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For he had not yet fallen on any of them, but they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So what is taking place here um, is uh, a expansion of the church, and it's an expansion that came about because of the death of Stephen and the persecution that followed it. As we've been talking, as we've been going through Acts, we've seen the uh, progressive explosion of persecution against the church. So we had first Peter and John being arrested, spending the night in jail and being threatened, told not to proclaim uh, the name of Jesus, preaching his name. And, uh, and then all of the apostles are arrested and thrown in jail, and then they are beat, and they rejoice in having suffered, uh, being beat for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they too are told not to proclaim uh, the good news in the name of Jesus Christ. And, uh, and then as the church begins to expand and thousands of people are being added to it, we need to see that all this is taking place in Jerusalem and in Judea, among the Jews. So, so far what we have is a, uh, an appearance of a sect of Judaism that is forming and taking place within the greater context of uh, Israel and the covenant, uh, the old covenant and the Mosaic law. But uh, in reality, if we understand what took place in the Gospels, uh, a new covenant with Israel has been made, a covenant that uh, has a Passover and a Passover lamb, but it is the true Passover, and a Passover lamb is none other than Jesus Christ. And, uh, and he has made a new covenant with uh, those who have expressed faith in him, the 12 apostles, that he endues with power, in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that we talked about in the book of Acts, chapter 1. And uh, Jesus has commissioned his uh, apostles to wait for the power and that they would be witnesses to the resurrection. And that's what has been kind of mushrooming out of this new covenant that has taken place. So the old covenant, although still there and still followed in existence, uh, has become obsolete because it has been replaced with a superior covenant. The new covenant is superior to the old. The Passover lamb of the new covenant, Jesus Christ, is superior to the animal sacrifices of the old covenant. And the priesthood with Jesus as the high priest after the order of Melchizedek is superior to the Levitical priesthood, which is the priesthood of the Old Covenant. So that greater context needs to be seen in this outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And what was promised under Joel, which had begun to be fulfilled in the uh, book of Acts in the first early part of it, chapter 1, chapter 2, is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and not on individuals within Israel under the Old Covenant, but upon all those, upon uh, men and women, 
upon free men and slaves, upon rich and poor and young and old. And the Holy Spirit is given to all. And, and we actually see that in uh, Acts chapter 2, uh, verse 38, in Peter's first sermon, where uh, thousands are brought into the kingdom of God. He says uh, this right here. He says, uh, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise, talking about the gift of the Holy Spirit, is for you, the Jews that he was preaching to, for your children, and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord God calls to himself. So he makes the gift of the Holy Spirit, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, uh, for everyone who will believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so from Pentecost, which was the outpouring upon the apostles and those that were with them at that uh, specific period of time, uh, to um, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon those uh, that Jesus, or that Peter preached Jesus to, uh, and um, were baptized and received the gift of the Holy Spirit uh, to the persecution that formed in the church, that drove the church beyond Jerusalem's borders and beyond Judea's borders into, uh, and this first encounter or record of it, is Samaria under the preaching of Philip, who was a deacon within the church in Jerusalem. And um, we're not told what signs accompanied the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But we know from Simon the Magician's reaction to all this, who has become a follower of Philip and, and a believer and was baptized, uh, we know that there had to be some kind of signs because he offers Peter and John money to have the power to give the Holy Spirit to those whom he laid his hands upon. So with the Peter and John laying their hands upon those who were believers in Samaria, Samaria um, there was a power manifest. There was an outward manifestation. Uh, and, and Simon desired to be able to give that outward manifestation to people. What it is, we're not told. We can assume that it would be uh, part of what we saw in the initial outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. But these were not Jews anymore. These were Samaritans. Jews and Samaritans had no dealings together. When we go back to John's gospel, we find that in Jesus' encounter with the woman at the well in Samaria, that there was a uh, stark difference and division between their worship. And so even though Samaria was within the confines of Israel there, uh, they did not worship, the Samaritans did not worship at the temple. Uh, they were, the, the woman at the well talks about, you Jews worship in Jerusalem, we Samaritans on the mountain. And Jesus' response to her is, says, the time is coming, is now here, when neither in Jerusalem nor on your mountain Will God be worshipped up there? He will be worshipped in the spirit of and in truth. And we see that taking place right here. We see the words of Jesus to this woman in Samaria being um, brought into fullness and into the reality of daily life as Philip preaches Jesus Christ. And as people believe and are baptized in the name of Jesus, the apostles then come down. Now, why the apostles had to come down? Why not uh, an automatic outpouring of this? Well, this was an expansion of the church. Remember, the, the, up till now, the church would have been viewed as a sect of Judaism. But this view and this vision, understanding the church, is changing. It is, it is progressing, 
as uh, God uh, pushes the church out beyond its comfortability borders in Israel and in Jerusalem. And the first place for it to expand is the place mentioned actually in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8, verse 8 in Samaria. And, uh, and the Samaritans then who believed and are baptized and are following after the teachings of Jerusalem uh, are brought into the authority structure of the church of the new covenant through the leadership of the apostles who are the leaders of the new covenant. Now remember when we talked about the apostles being rest, arrested and having to appear before the Sadducees and, and the council and the leaders of Israel, you had the uh, comparison of the leaders of the old covenant there and the leaders of the new covenant, the 12 apostles. And, uh, and you see the persecution from the old on to the new, even though the old uh, had been fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ, and the Passover had been uh, made the true Passover in the death of Jesus Christ, uh, there is still this conflict that has arisen between the old and the new. And so the Samaritans are brought under the umbrella of the new covenant through the leadership of the new covenant Peter and John, two of the apostles that had been sent there by the rest of the apostles. So it's appropriate to see this take place, to see this beginning growth of the church. And, and we'll continue to see that in these uh, early chapters of the book of Acts as we progress from the Samaritans even to the Gentiles in the near future as the church goes out proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. The old antagonisms, the old differences, the old prejudices and biases that existed under the old covenant between the Jews and the Samaritans are broken down in the person of Jesus. The book of Galatians talks about this. It says the two have become one new man, the uh, Jews and the Gentiles, in this case, the Jews and the Samaritans, who were divided in Christ, become one new man, one new person, one new faith. They are not limited to the old anymore, but God, through the person of Jesus Christ, is opening up the gospel, the good news to the whole world. We need, like uh, the example here, to move beyond any prejudices we have, uh, any biases we have to realize that the Lordship of Christ and the good news of Jesus Christ uh, is there for everyone. And it breaks down barriers and it makes you and I one new person in Christ. One faith, one baptism, one Lord, one God. And, and there is to be no division amongst us. Now, we do have some divisions in some of our uh, particular doctrines and beliefs and, and uh and yet we need to see that if it is faith in Jesus Christ alone that we are saved, that there is a oneness that we can share in together in our worship of God. And we're going to see this expanse, a little wonderful aspect of, of the book uh, of Acts is uh, the expansion of the church. It's sad that uh, this outpouring of the Holy Spirit and this um, aspect of faith in Christ has become such a divisive image between a Pentecostal and non-Pentecostal, charismatic and non-charismatic, spirit-filled and non-spirit-filled. You see none of that in the early book, in these early chapters. 
for those who repent and were baptized have submitted to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, the promise of the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit is theirs. I see the, uh, the need of the apostles to come down as a means of teaching the church and revealing to the Samaritans who had become believers that there was a unity being brought about through Jesus Christ, through faith in Jesus Christ, and that they come underneath the new covenant made with Israel now. We'll see that again uh, with uh, as we go through Acts a couple more times as that expands to the Gentiles and beyond. So uh, hopefully um, this theme of unity will be uh, a theme that uh, will consume our hearts in, in how we deal with one another with grace and with gracious words. And we'll see you on Wednesday morning as we be, continue to expand this study in the book of Acts.